Shabbat Shalom everyone. Welcome to Science Lab. The signs are happening because Lord Jesus is coming. Every day we are looking at some of the signs that are happening around us. In this episode we are going to see the signs in Israel. Another Arab state will soon join the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain in normalizing ties with Israel, according to the US ambassador to the UN Kelly Craft. Kraft told Saudi-owned Al Arabia News Channel, our plan is to bring more countries which we will have more being announced very soon, one in the next day or two. The historic Abraham Accords were signed in Washington on September the 15th, making the UAE and Bahrain the third and fourth countries to sign the peace agreements with Israel, following Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. The historic Abraham Accords were signed in Washington on September 15th, making the UAE and Bahrain the third and fourth countries to sign peace agreements with Israel following Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. Media speculation has narrowed the potential countries down to Oman, Morocco and Sudan. Saudi Arabia, though it has the strong ties to Washington, who brokered the Abraham Accords, has applauded the newfound peace but distanced itself as a potential new partner in keeping with the traditional Arab policy of holding off normalization with the Jewish state until the Palestinians have their own state. The recent developments and shifting dynamics in the Middle East proof that more and more moderate Arab states are willing to overlook the Palestinian issue to join hands with the Jerusalem in standing against increasingly aggressive Iran. Kraft told AI Arabia, obviously we would welcome Saudi Arabia to be next. But what's most important is that we focus on the arguments and we do not allow the Iranians regime to exploit the goodwill of Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates or Israel. We want to bring everyone on board in hopes that this will allow the Iranian citizens to see the people really want peace in the Middle East. And they are also part of this peace. The American ambassador continued. While Saudi Arabia will most likely not bring its Israel ties to light anytime soon, Saudi King Salman bin Abdulaziz has harsh words about the Islamic regime in its speech before the UN General Assembly on Wednesday. The king criticized Tehran for using 2015 nuclear deal to intensify its expansionist activities, create its terror networks and use terrorism to produce nothing but chaos, extremism and satirianism. King Salman continued, our experience with the Iranian regime has taught us that partial solutions or appeasement will not stop its threats to international peace and security. A comprehensive solution and firm international position are required to ensure fundamental solutions to the Iranian regime's attempt to obtain weapons of mass destruction and its ballistic missile program. The Arabian Kingdom might not be ready yet to officially join hands with the Jewish state, but they certainly hold the same anti-Iranian stance. So which Arab state will be the next? After witnessing the historic peace between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and also Bahrain, and the prospect of more Arab states making peace with the Jewish state, the two top Palestinian factions met to mend their own ties and unite against Israel. Leaders from Hamas, the terror group that controlled the Gaza Strip, and also a delegation from Fateh, Palestinian Authority, President Muhammad Abbas party in Judah and Samaria, met in Istanbul to discuss burying the 13-year-old Hatch in order to face the common Jewish enemy together. Their meeting end towards ending the division and applying the directive of the Conference of Palestinian Faction Hates. A further statement said, When Abbas met via video conference with Hamas Chief Smal Hania and Secretary General Jihad al-Nakallah of Islamic Jihad, 
the second largest terror group operating in Gaza. The Hamas and Islamic Jihad leaders turned in from the Palestinian embassy in Beirut. The fractions have been at odds since Hamas staged a violence cop in 2007, expelling their Fateh brethren from the Gaza Strip. Since then, there has been a sharp division between the two, with Fatah transitioning from being the main face of the Palestinian people to being relocated to Judah and Samaria, the so-called West Bank. The history of infighting includes Hamas throwing Fatah members off of Ruth and Gaza during the 2007 takeover. Aside from competing for complete control over the Palestinian people, the factions also differ on their stance towards Israel. The PA favors a more diplomatic enmity with Hamas advocate all of war against the Jewish state. Nonetheless, the threat of an Arab state daring to bypass the Palestinian issue and make peace with the Jewish state is more than the constrained factions can bear. Hamas and Fateh can both agree on at least one thing, the Abraham Accords, the peace between Israel and the UAE and Bahrain, likely to soon include even more of their Arab brethren are unacceptable. Few people, both Palestinians and outsiders, however, believe the factions will be truly able to overcome their deep-rooted differences. The Time of Israel cited a recent Palestinian poll that says that only 11% of the Palestinian people see a Hamas Fateh reunion as a possibility. So far, we are seeing about the signs happening in Israel. After seeing all these things, we definitely need a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll continue after a short break. Welcome back to Science Lab. The signs are happening because Lord Jesus is coming. Before the break, we were seeing about the signs happening in Israel. Let's continue. Rumors of a potential sale of the United States premier fighter jet to the United Arab Emirates have circulated since the August 13th announcement of the US brokered peace deal between Israel and the Gulf State. The F-35 Lockheed Martin made fighter jet has a highly valued ability to slip through enemy radar screens undetected. Until now, Israel is the only Middle East nation to have the jet and status quo Israel toppled hard for the US President Donald Trump to maintain, but unsuccessfully. The rumors of the F-35 side deal with the UAE were confirmed when Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz visited Washington and met with the U.S. counterpart Mark Esper. Discussions between the men centered not only on whether the UAE would get the jets, but how the Israel's qualitative military edge would be maintained. Based on a 2008 U.S. law and decades of precedent, the U.S. is committed to making sure Israel has better defense than other Middle East militaries. A cornerstone of our defense relationship is preserving Israel's qualitative military age in this region. As per said Gans, according to the Pentagon, exactly how that will be accomplished is unclear. Instead of peace for peace, as the deal was touted by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, it is peace for the F-35. The quid pro quo is clear that the UAE, which is working with the US government to link the deal by December 2nd, the national day of the celebration for the United Arab Emirates. Understandably, 
Israel's are now more tempered in their jubilation over the peace accord. Israeli Air Force Chief Amiram Nokrin confirmed the potential danger the sale poses to Israel in an interview. These things are not reflected in the strategic analysis as endangering Israel next week. These are things that could produce processes that may, in the long term strategic balance, be less optimal for the state of Israel. It is also possible as the U.S. looks to broker more peace deals with Israel and the Arab states, more advanced weaponry will be given to them as well. The fear stems from the further step that will be taken from after the first step, and then perhaps the spread which will be bordered, Norkin said. And now the UAE has been enticed by the F-35s in order to sign a peace deal with Israel. Other nations will expect at least the same thing. This could set off a wave of peace deals with Israel, but also flood the Middle East with more sophisticated American arms. Jerusalem Post Editor-in-Chief Yaakov Kask conquered in Skolom, if the U.S. sells F-35s to the UAE, it won't be able to deny a similar request from the Saudis. And even if Israel wanted to lobby the administration or the Congress against the sales, its hands will be tied. It's not going to engage in a political battle against a country with which it just moments ago signed a peace deal. To allow the sale and yet preserve Israel's military aid, Washington is looking to ways of making the F-35 more visible to Israeli radar system. Commentators have said it will be five or six years at best before UAE, before UAE receives the jet. This lag may give Israeli enough time to develop a superior system should Abu Dhabi ever decide to direct its fire towards the Jewish state. In the short term, Israel do not fear such an attack because the UAE has a joint enemy in Iran. In fact, it's Iran's pushy foreign policy, along with the U.S. withdrawal from the Middle East, that motivated the deal in the first place. But as is often the case in the Middle East, regime change is always possible, which could see the F-35s fall into the hands of a future adversary. It is the long-term forecast that has Israelis uneasy about the deal. Bible prophecy confirms that they should be. The deals are nothing more than an admission of the need to encounter the radical Islamic state of Iran. They are not inevitable of newfound love between Gulf Arabs and the Jewish state. This anti-Iranian alliance now forming between the Gulf state and the other Arabs is actually described in Psalm 83. As biblical historians and commentators will tell you, this alliance have never formed in history which shows that it is for the later days. One nation not mentioned as part of the Psalm 83 alliance is Israel. Their alliance comes together in the shadow of the Iranian threat, but Iran is not the main target of the prophecy. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of the Israel may not be more in remembrance. While the Psalm 83 Alliance may come together to target Iran and will eventually do so, the main purpose of the Alliance will be to destroy Israel. This prophecy adds a terrifying dimension to the sale of high-tech military hardware to the United Arab Emirates. Israel is a timepiece we should watch out for in these last days. All the incidents that are happening in and around Israel will show us what time we are living in. All these shows that we are living in the last days. Lord Jesus Christ is coming again very soon. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to tune in to Science Lab next time. Now, we would like to end the program by asking you a question. Which fighter jet was rumored of a potential sale of the United States to the United Arab Emirates? Option A, McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle. Option B, Boeing F-A-18E Super Hornet. Option C, F-35 Lockheed Martin. 
send us the right answer to science lab at angeltv.org if you have missed any of the episodes do not worry you can watch it again and again in our science lab youtube page but don't forget to like share and comment on the video ask your friends and relatives to watch the science lab so that they will know that we are living in the last days remember signs are happening because lord jesus is coming Maranatha.